Good morning guys, how you doing? My name is Chris Rod. I'm the owner and operator of Sun City Lawn Care here in West Texas, El Paso. Today we're going to simply be making a video about some lawn issues and diseases uh, that we're seeing here in the month of July, summertime, hot as heck across the U.S. and more importantly here in El Paso. This is for my El Paso homeowners, but if you guys live elsewhere, y'all stay tuned because we're going to be talking again about some of the issues that I'm seeing across a lot of platforms. Today's video, disease issues, fungal issues, July issues, okay? You guys are all seeing it out there. You may be experiencing some of this in your own lawn, okay? But let's talk about what it is, how to prevent it, how to cure it, how to fix it, uh, and some of the steps that you can take on your own as a DIYer to solve these problems, okay? So if you guys are part of the lawn care community or you're on any sort of social media platform where you're watching guys out there take care of their lawns, you will hear us talk a lot about July issues, primarily disease and fungal issues, okay? So, what can you be experiencing? How do you identify them, okay? If you're the DIY, you're the homeowner, maybe you're trying to research on what is going on with my lawn. <laughs> it's either one of two things this time of the year, okay? It's either a pest issue because you didn't put down your grub control product for army worms, sod web worms, ants, mites, uh, whatever other little creepy crawlers are out there. That's one option. Two, let me, before I get into two, which is your fungus issues. One, identifying those pest issues, you're gonna start to see some areas, usually it's an isolated incidence where you're gonna experience some discoloration or chlorosis from your green to the yellow to the dead brown and then they're gonna move to another spot. That's your pest issues, okay? The second thing you're gonna see this time of the year are your fungal issues, your disease issues, okay? So let me just walk you through my lawn real quick. Let's see if we can identify some disease issues. Uh, you're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I take the necessary steps to go ahead and prevent this stuff from happening, okay? I've learned from the past. So if you've got disease issues right now and you're watching this video and you're saying, hey, what's going on with my lawn? You need to ask yourself one of two questions. Have I applied my pest control product? If not, you need to get it down. And two, did I put down my fungicide at the right time of the year? So if you're down south, okay, maybe you're going through hurricane season in Florida or you're here in El Paso, Texas, and you're going through monsoon season, and you didn't already put down your fungicide back in early May or June, get it down now. And we'll talk about products later, okay? But let's identify and see if we can find something going on with my lawn. As you guys can see, up, oh, up, oh, up, oh, I see some brown spots. Where are they at, brown spots? What are these brown spots? They look like, is that, is it dollar spot? I don't know. I do know, that's pea spots. That's my little buddy back there, that's Tango. Tango, sit. Come. Sit. Good boy. Wait. Stay. He listens. He's trained, guys. But what he's not trained to do is go or not go 100% urine-free, dog poop-free inside my grass. We take him to the side. The areas you see over there are urine spots, okay? It's a high urea inside of the dog pee, okay? I want to show you something that was really interesting. When you're identifying these issues in your lawn or someone else's lawn, and you see that brown spot right there, I'm going to put a picture of how circular that was. And then I want you to look how circular this tin can is and tell me those two don't match up. You got to be able to identify this stuff. So let's talk fungus, okay? July issues, okay? And I'm going to post some pictures throughout this video some of the things that I'm seeing inside of our, uh, some new clients that we picked up and what kind of issues they've got experiencing and what they're going on. And you identify them by first patterns. Sprinkler patterns, if you've got a 45 degree head there, or you got a 180 degree head, you're gonna see some chlorosis of that sprinkler, okay? The second way to identify fungal issues is the color. Usually you're gonna have like a dark, orange sometimes can be mistaken for chemical burn dark orange brown or you might even see some bluish gray color inside of your lawn okay that bluish gray is already an infected diseased area that's a mycelia uh, which is a fungal fungus or disease taking over that area okay it looks like powder sometimes Powdery mildew is a disease, okay? But it turns this color first, all right? And then it turns orange gray or brown, a dark brown, and then it just dies, okay? It looks like a 
Typically, patterns circular, okay? If you guys are up north, you may be experiencing, not this time of the year, but there are things that look like circular rings, fairy ring, the white powder on it, powdery mildew, okay? Down here in the south, we're in El Paso, Texas. We're in the west, Midwest. But if you're in the south, what we're looking for primarily is large patch, okay? It is Rhizoctonia saloni, okay? Rhizoctonia saloni, okay? It's take all, or not take all, it's um, large patch and it's pretty much a brown area. It's very large, can range from five inches to 10 feet in circular pattern, okay? And sometimes they're irregular shapes. Sometimes they're irregular shapes and that's fine. Um, up north, you guys are gonna be experiencing brown patch, okay? Inside your fescue lawns or your Kentucky bluegrass lawns. Same disease, it's Rhizoctonia saloni. They just call it different things, okay? uh summer patch spring patch a little too late because we're not in the spring we're in the summer summer patch take all patch um dollar spot dollar spot like i mentioned earlier they're a little bit smaller about two inches in circular pattern but you typically see a lot more of them dispersed throughout a larger portion of your lawn okay and again i'll show you some pictures of what's going on in some of the lawns we're seeing here in el paso that have not been treated yet now no matter the fungal disease, whether it be any of the patches I've already mentioned, the fairy ring, the powdery mildew, the red thread, they can all be cured. How do we cure them, okay? We put down fungicides. Now there's different classifications of fungicide and each one has a different mode of action, okay? That you need to understand because what I want you guys to do is get two different products, okay? Active ingredients, one containing azoxystrobin, a-Z-O-X-Y, strobin, <laughs> and propagonazole, okay? I'll put a link down below where you can get some of this stuff, or you can get your butt over to, you know, the Home Depot, the Lowe's, and get a bag of bio-advanced fungicide, okay? It's a granular, little blue bag. Push, use your push spreader, put it down. It's usually about two and a half, three pounds per thousand square feet of product um water it in okay and then let the lawn repair itself okay give it about two weeks okay if you're growing bermuda grass or any of your southern grass types for that matter we've got those stolons that are going to start creeping and crawling and filling in those areas so those spots i showed you earlier i'm not worried about those those dog pee spots they fill back in that area i showed you over here i'm going to show you a picture from a week ago and to what it is now it's already recovering okay it's not the end of the world it's just grass but you don't want it spreading okay if you're growing vegetables and flowers and what this disease issues you don't want them spreading so you got to take proactive measures that's how you cure it okay when to cure it it depends on your season and your area okay you have to be proactive about applying fungicides if you don't want any disease issues and you want a nice green thick lawn throughout the entire summer get proactive know your rain dates here in el paso we're in our monsoon season it starts around june 15th normally and it goes all the way through august so we've already done an application of fungicide i do it and i rotate this is why i told you to get two products every 28 days you're going to rotate between the two products azoxystrobin and propagonazole okay the reason why you want to rotate is because grass plants they're becoming more and more resilient and resistant to some of the products we use herbicides and fungicides and it's becoming harder and harder to kill this stuff or to prevent it okay get yourself some of the products get it in the ground um in the month of July, these are really the issues you should be experiencing, okay? But you gotta ask yourself two questions. Is it disease, fungus, or is it pest? If you haven't applied either one of those products and you don't know what the answer is and they look similar, apply both products. Get down your pest control for grub worms, army worms, sod web worms, ants, ticks, gnat, whatever it is, gnats, white crane flies, and also apply your fungicide, you can apply both products at the same time because you have to water them in as well. Now, the last thing I'm gonna say um, outside of that is remember, you gotta know your temperatures, you gotta know your time of the season, we're in monsoon season, this is what happens. These are July issues that should be experiencing, that you may be experiencing, or you may not be like I am and you don't have any disease issues because you took the necessary steps. That's what I want for you guys, okay? To have the greenest lawn on the block, take the necessary measures to prevent any disease issues inside of your lawn. Um, look at the description below for some more information. And as always, don't forget to fertilize that subscribe button.
Speaking of fertilizer, you can continue to fertilize even though you've got disease, but you never apply more than half a pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Read your product labels. Uh, I'm going to put a link also that's going to show you guys a bunch of different pictures and identification charts on how to properly identify some of these disease issues. And it's going to tell you some of the ambient air temperatures. A lot of this stuff occurs when temperatures are above nighttime, 65 to 70 degrees. And, a, and the daytime temperatures are above 85 to 90 degrees. If you're in that range and you got heat, increased heat and the increased humidity, that's probably what's going on with your lawn nine times out of the 10. But getting back to the point, subscribe to the channel, boost that YouTube algorithm for me. Always fertilize that subscribe button, the like button, give me a thumbs up. And if you have questions or comments, leave them down below and I will get back to them as soon as I can, okay? If you guys wanna see some more content, please do all the following. That way we can keep growing this channel just like we're growing your lawns. Have a good one.